All right, getting ready. So the mm mm mm. Awesome. My son-in-law works for the Coca-Cola company and he brings me these soda. They don't sell this soda here in the States. Um, they sell it in Mexico and it's a different, different taste. It's like the old Coca-Cola back in the 80s. Has a little more sugar, that's why, but, oh man, I know it's not healthy, but mm mm mm. Delicious. Okay, so, Right now, I'm gonna take an image that they sent to me. They want me to invert this image. And when it comes to Photoshop and taking an image that belongs to be printed on a white t-shirt and you have to invert it, you can just do that and then that's it. Sometimes you have to do some adjustments so it could print on a black t-shirt. So that's what we're gonna do right now. I'm gonna open up Photoshop. This is it here. This is the image, Gizm, Punk is Hippies. So right now, what I do first is I open up another file of my 13 and 9, 13 by 19 film and then I'm gonna take the image they sent and I'm just gonna drag it there to see how big it is and let's see okay pretty good not bad it looks good sometimes they send me images I drag them and it's very small they're like three inches you know, wide, it's like, oh man, I have to take it to Illustrator and vectorize. So here's the image. I'm gonna show you how to invert. I'm not gonna sh use no shortcuts so you could understand the tools that I'm using, okay? So first, what I do here is go take the same image and I'm gonna go then to image, adjust, and invert. And there it is, it's already inverted. You cannot just give it to him like that. It's not gonna look good. So what I do is he don't want that um, background. He wants me to clear that background. So the next thing we're gonna do is go to the magic wand and we're gonna click on the background and we're gonna, we cannot press similar because then it's gonna take all the black from their faces and all that. So by pressing shift, we're gonna start hitting the ones that we didn't get and it's all there. You see that? All of it is there already. And then you do a right click, then you cut. Now that you already cut it, there it is. There goes the image. Now, the fonts, he wants them also, they're gonna go on white. So that means here in the film, we have to make them in black. So what you're gonna do is take the paint bucket, make sure that your foreground is on, on black, and then we're just gonna come over here. Let me span a little here, just one time, two times right here. Let me widen it up, bring it down so you guys can see, and there it is. So now that I have the paint bucket, I'm just gonna click on each font and get them into black, see? Here, we have uh, words down here, they're smaller. So now what we're gonna do is take the paint bucket and go one at a time. One, just make sure that you get everything, all the fonts in black. See, now this on the shirt is gonna go on white. And like I said, I know there's shortcuts to just do this real quick, but I just wanna show you how it's done normally. Later on, you're gonna get your shortcuts on your own, but to have shortcuts, you gotta understand what tool are you using by visualizing it, grabbing it, and then learn shortcuts. But don't try to learn shortcuts without knowing the tools. So all that is ready there. So when I go here, boom, I go fit screen and it's all set up already. Look around to make sure there's nothing that um, um, around the image that stood in black, like this little part here. So I'm gonna take the eraser tool right here and I'm just gonna come here and erase that little part there. Now you see the image the way it looks but it's so, there's something missing and what's missing is the outline because then only the black will come up. You will not see the white. You don't even know if it's a, a, a body or anything. So what you wanna do now that you have all that ready, you're gonna go down here to FX. You're gonna stroke. And that stroke is that you have it in black. You see that? Now you size it up right here and you could go as wide as you want. 
but we just got we just want a little outline just to make sure that is there and that looks pretty good there press ok and there it is now that image is ready to print on black shirt because all you're gonna take is everything that's black and now what you see here is white is gonna be black and everything that we have here in black on the t-shirt is gonna be white so that's a good one there that's a good job there the thing I'm doing is I'm I'm not printing this image they sent me about nine images so I could just take them um, invert them vectorize them if they need it and just print them on a film and give it to them and I charge them just for this job here and that's one thing that opened up last year for me last year for me I started doing the classes I started um, telling clients and students that you could start at home with just a press a heat gun or a heat press some ink some squeegees and you're ready to go because a lot of people here in the Bronx, they're doing it from home. So it's an apartment. They don't have an exposure unit. They don't have a wash booth. They don't want to be using the bathtub. So they send me images so I could separate the color, vectorize them. I, I do screens. I coat screens. I reclaim screens. And I do the whole package. And last year, I started focusing on that with the classes and all that. And actually, I double my profit. The same as printing t-shirts, now I do screens for people, constantly every day people come, drop off three, four screens, I reclaim them, I set them up, and it's much better. I'm not just printing all day, these jobs are pretty good. I will do nine, nine films of this, and I'm already popping about almost $200, and I will do this in less than an hour. So yeah, I'd rather do this and then sometimes print and all that. But at the end, when you put all these little different streams of income together, that's when you create profit. If you only focus on printing shirts and making money on printing shirts, it's gonna take you a long time, man. Start looking for other avenues that's related with the screen printing and you will see your profits grow, man. So right now, um, let me go and prep the screens up. All right, I know that this is the job that screen printers and I hate the most to do, but the trick is just do three a day. Don't let all these screens pile up. Right now, um, last two weeks of the year, I closed down the shop and I painted everything again. I painted my walls all nice and black. The floor, I painted again, but this time I did something different because I caught myself painting the floor every I think twice a year. And because I didn't put that epoxy over it, this time I put the epoxy, looks beautiful, it's gonna last longer. So now it's gonna be easy to clean, especially when some ink falls, it's not touching the paint, it's just touching the epoxy and it's very easy to clean. So I'm very happy with that. So getting ready for 2023, cause 2023 is the year of increase. So get ready, fellas. You're gonna see a lot of increase in your shop, man. So get ready, man. So this is my first time printing nylon jackets. So, and when it comes to printing these jackets, it's different than printing t-shirts and hoodies. It's, it needs an additive. It needs, it needs a catalyst, like a, it's called a nylon, a nylon bond aging. You know, this has to bond with that fabric. Or else if you print it just with plastisol, it's gonna come off, it's gonna, you're gonna scratch it, you're gonna see it. It's not gonna hold because there's nothing to hold that plastisol. So what you were looking for in any screen print supply is look for a bonding agent that's called nylon bond. That's what they call it. A nylon bond is an additive that you're gonna mix with the ink. I will prefer to use a 110 mesh because you is you're gonna want you know once you put a little bit of this, it's gonna thin out the ink a little. You want that opacity still look good, so make sure you use a 110 mesh. The next thing that you might need is a pallet jacket holder, something that holds down the pallet because these jackets they come with a linen inside, so it's it's something inside. It's not gonna hold. So if you put tack on your pallet, it's still gonna lift. But I'm not gonna use none of that. I believe that 
all it needs is a few little strokes, no flashing, and it looks good. Because if you flash it, you're going to see that it don't look that good because there's nowhere else that ink is going to go. It's going to hold pretty well. It's going to look pretty good. That's the test we're going to give today. But right now, let me just set up the screens, set up everything up real quick, and then we'll come and do the process of what it requires adding this and how to print it. So let's do this. All right, now that everything is all set up, I want to tell you about today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by Printavo. Printavo is a simple screen printing management software. Printavo will help you manage orders, handling schedules, automation, and online stores. Regardless if you are a small or a big print shop, Printavo will help you streamline your business. Right now, if you go to printavo.com and use the promo code TAINO, you'll get 50% off your first month so that's a pretty good deal the first month 50 percent off just to try it out try it out because it's going to help you especially with the coding have everything organized ready for right now like the taxes are coming so go to printavo.com and use the promo code taino and i want to thank printavo for sponsoring today's video now back to me let's talk about the additive the nylon bonding agent, you're only going to use 10% of what your plastisol ink has, only 10%. And the next thing is that you don't want to add too much. You don't want to have a big mixture of a lot of ink because after four or five hours, this adding this to your plastisol ink is going to harden the ink and it's not going to be working well. That's one thing. Make sure that you mix enough for the order and try to make sure that order is within four hours. The next thing is the jackets. Once you get these jackets, they come out of the box all wrinkled up. Make sure you have an iron handy. You want to iron the part that you're going to print on, you know, because if you only passing one shot only, so if any little wrinkle there, that gap of the ink is not going to show up. Now you're going to mess up the jacket. So make sure that it's nice and iron. The next thing is when you're passing this jacket through your conveyor dryer, bring down the temperature a little from the way usually you have it for shirts and hoodie. Bring it down a little because what you want to do is try to reach that 320 degrees. 320, no, no 340, no 350 because now you're in risk of maybe the jacket will get a little wrinkle because of the heat. It'll start getting, it start shrinking up a little. You don't want that. So make sure you balance that conveyor dryer, pass it very um, low first, and then go work your way up to make sure that you don't go over 340, 350 degrees on that plastic sole link, all right? So right now, I'm gonna take the jacket, I'm gonna print the back, and I'm gonna print the front. I'm gonna give it two to three strokes, and let's see how it shows up, man. So let's do this. Alright, here it is, front and back, came out really good man, nice and smooth, really really nice man, hope you guys could see this, but once you print it real nice, no flashing needed, just one pass, perfect enough man, and give it a little scratch, if there's no, no plastic sole ink, so far so good, and the next thing you do is, you take it to the washer, wash it, once it comes out, everything is still intact, then you proceed to the order, but that's how you print nylon jackets. All right, get it. Right. Today's topic we're gonna to be talking about is the laser guiding system. You know, very, very important for screen printers to have that, especially when you're doing other things than just printing t-shirts. The laser guiding system is like the T-square and Sharpie. You're not gonna need the T-square or the Sharpie when you have these laser lights that lets you set up the palette and all that. It's, it's perfect, man. And 
the laser creates this bright crosshair registration that you could just move all over the place. The Anatole Thunder that I have has four laser lights, as you see. And these four laser lights, you will be able to see it right on top of your palette and also on top of your garment. These laser lights here is that it also helps you do when it's time to do any registration, you know, doing the screens, because you could bring down the screen, as you see, you still see it right there. Once you align it perfectly to your registration mark, you're gonna, it's much, much easier than trying to see the pat, you know, the, the mark on the bottom. No, it was good. It's gonna help you register much, much faster. The other thing that also will help is those times when you're going, you know, these 2X, 3X, 4Xs, with the um, laser, you could move that line, you know, towards your right. So that means the middle of your shirt, you want to bring it and align it with that laser light. And then you will know how far to go for the 2X, a little f how far to go to the 3X and 4X. It, it keeps you very aligned by just fol um, following the, the seam of the shirt. They're not always accurate, but they're around there. It will help you move that 4X as as far so that left chest print could be right where it's supposed to be at that's what i use it for the other one i use it for is printing on sweatpants a lot of the logos go a little bit under the pocket you know and it has to be in the middle so as you see i put the pants right on my palette and then i align it up with the pocket the front of the pocket now i know that all my pants that i print are just gonna be exact because now I have this little line in the bottom here that lets me know the space from the pocket down where the logo is gonna go and how far you know off more towards the middle the logo is gonna be so every time that you print a sweatpant it's gonna be exactly it's not gonna be a one print it's gonna be lower and the other one's gonna be higher a little bit is gonna be more towards the middle not towards the side with the laser light system much much easier the other one i use it for is when i'm doing neck labels when i do neck labels i really don't like do using the little on um, palette i guess the palette that little the little palette that i use for the sweatpants because sometimes i'm i do not know if my shirt is really straight i'd rather use it turn the shirt around and throw it right into the palette so i could know that my shirt is a lot is is straight and then it's easier for me to align the neck label because now I'm gonna use my guiding system, my laser guiding system, and I'm gonna do the little crosshairs and make sure I do the square exactly where the logo has to go every time I put in the shirt and then I leave the label on. I do not take the label because the label is gonna guide me where is that, where is that middle at. Once I put that shirt there, then I look at the label, I push back the label or tear off the label and then print your neck label and that's one of the best things because now all the neck labels so i've seen a lot of even um shirts that i buy in a store with the printed neck label they're not in the middle they're more like in the side or they're a little bit off and my ocd will not allow that i have to make sure that is right on the middle man okay the other one is left chest prints when it comes to left chest prints you want to make sure that it's exactly where it's supposed to be at you know especially when like i said before when you do two three eggs you want to make sure it's on the right location you see it's the middle two inches it lets you know and then comes the logo it's good to just start with that and then from there on you know exactly where it's at but if, let's say that you have a shirt with a pocket and you don't have that little metal part that goes inside the pocket to lift up so you could print on it if you don't have that you still could print those left pockets all you have to do is use the laser light, align it in the pocket, make sure that it's not touching the seam where, you know, it's nice and flat. Get a little squeegee that fits that pocket. You, you got one, cut it up and pass it and it will work if it's a one color print, man. So now let me go and show you, I uh, did this job five days ago and it's these jackets that have these seams on the back, on the left and on the right and on the bottom and I have to place this little logo right there and without these laser lights you're really not gonna be so accurate because different sizes of the shirt so you want to make sure it falls right there so here's a little b-roll of me printing these jackets with the seam and check it out let's do this
As you see, those jackets came out fire, man. And um, I did the t-shirt. The t-shirt had a bigger logo, but with these jackets, I had to use my measuring tape to make sure that I got the proper size of the logo that is not too big or is too small. Just perfect there where my squeegee is gonna pass through there and it's not gonna touch those two seams. That's how you print when it comes to these jackets. That one was, a, I think, double layer. You know, I didn't need to flash because polyester just won't pass goes right through but those jackets came out nice so get those laser lights so you could expand and do other stuff and make sure that it's done correctly today i just gotta coat some screens and set up a job i'm gonna do on hoodies and i'm gonna show you guys how to do the off contact Screen coated for about a month and a half and I want to try to see how long that emulsion on the screen will last so I'm gonna expose it and let me see if it washes well or it takes long to wash and I'll have a limit because I tried it before for about I think it was three weeks here I'm doubling it up Got a nice candle, Bosque Encanto, means enhanced forest. Okay. Mmm. Mm -hmm. Pretty good. I like the shop smelling good. Okay, now we know that three weeks it works, but six weeks, month and a half, it doesn't. Look at what started happening. Two, it, the image showed up, but then took a while to come out and then it just started breaking up. So no, just keep it right now, no more than three weeks. I guess maybe three weeks, I got lucky, but guarantee two weeks, no more than that. Okay, today we're going to be talking about the off contact. The off contact is a question I get a lot on YouTube, on Instagram, is the off contact. And we're going to just run the whole thing with the off contact so you will understand more how important is the off contact and all depends on a lot of areas. So right now, let me talk about the cardboard that I just got. This cardboard, I got it from the 99 cent store. Now, I don't want to cut a box, you know, but I need my boxes. You know, so I don't use boxes. So I get this little cardboard here. It's exactly what I'm looking for. One eighth of an inch is the size of a quarter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one of my pallets and then with a marker, you know, trace it all around, make sure I'm gonna cut the same size of the pallet. What you're gonna do is you're gonna place the shirt on the pallet and then you're gonna bring the cardboard on the top. Depending on the size of your pallet, make sure that the cardboard is cut with the size of only, it's touching only the mesh, not the frame, just the mesh. Very, very important. Um, if you're dealing with a uh, polyester, 50-50, soft, you know, light, light weight t-shirts, you could just use the cardboard. You don't need a shirt. But when you're dealing with this 100% t-shirt, place a t-shirt, 
and do the off contact with the t-shirt. If you're gonna do a hoodie, take the hoodie on top of that cardboard and then do the off contact based on that hoodie. And that's how you um, set up your off contact with different type of apparel. I'm gonna bring down my whole screen and I'm gonna loosen all the knobs. So if you have um, rear um, clamps, for the screen, I have side clamps, but if you have rear clamps, just loosen it up and let that screen drop completely and make sure that that screen is nice and flat. That's how you're gonna start the off contact. The other part before you do that, it's gonna change if you're using a brand new mesh screen, which the tension is tight versus one that you, it already has two years, three years, that tension it's a little softer. So make sure that you're gonna do for that screen, if you have that screen, make sure you do the off contact for that screen and let it drop. And you're gonna see there's a difference when, when you have a tight new mesh and then an old screen. So it, no matter if you have a four color print, make sure you, um, all of them have to be off contact properly. Meaning properly off contact. Okay, whatever. So. Now that you already have it loosened up, now you're gonna bring it down, make sure, and uh, just press a little down. Just don't let it just lay flat there. Just give it a nice little, little touch, little, little pressure going down, just so you can know that it's, 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 it's touching the, the mesh. So now the mesh is already is, is, is on the contact of that cardboard. And then you start tightening it up your clamps. Tighten it up. Once you lift it up, take out the, cardboard and then bring it down and you're gonna see that's the off contact we're looking for you're gonna do the same thing when it comes to hoodies to hoodies same process you're gonna put the hoodie on you're gonna you know release your clamps bring it down put a little pressure make sure that the cardboard is giving some pressure to that mesh and then tying up your clamps and that's it now you got the off contact now, the other thing now that a lot of people don't understand is it all depends on the type of ink that you're using. If you're using a white plastisol ink that is a heavy ink, that is a perfect off contact. But now let's say you're using black. You know, black ink is very soft. It's like almost near discharge or water base. So when it comes to that, if you have a off contact and you wanna do that, what's gonna happen is the you're gonna have this little smudge coming out, bleeding, I guess, you know, that's what they call it, or a smudge maybe on the top if you're pulling or in the bottom if you're pushing. You're gonna get that, it's, it's gonna be, it's not gonna be sharp. So the way to fix that is do the, no off contact, just bring everything down completely, right on top of the shirt, let it sit there, then tighten it up and try to not have a lot of off contact so there's no place for that um, ink to go. And when you're dealing with these ink, these black ink, um, a, little, a little faster than when you're using white ink. You're, if you're pushing or you're pulling, speak, pick up the speed a little and you'll see a nice big difference when you're doing off contact and how to keep all that sharp. Mm. Oh man, that coffee is on the money, man. Okay, I'm doing a little bit of work on my business plan for this year because there's a lot of things I want to do moving forward and I'm trying to create a sustainable business aside from my screen printing. Screen printing is still gonna be my main part of the business, but it'll be fun to see if I can manage to get that part as a side hustle, you know, and that one will be the YouTube channel. Cause I usually post a YouTube channel like once a week or once every two weeks. I don't really focus a lot on, on putting. If you notice, I already have put three videos in one week for the first time. So, because I'm focusing 
on this channel to be my side hustle. I already have a sponsor. I have two, you know, right there about to happen. And that one is the one I want because that's going to change how you do the signs and all that, how easy it's going to be. I've been practicing, looking at it. Once I get it, I'm going to make a video of it. And it's going to be a game changer to those people that don't know how to create the signs or do the signs. It's going to be huge, man. But right now, since in part of my business plan, what I'm doing is for the screen printing, the prices. And that's what I want to talk about today is should we raise our prices and why should you? And that's what we're going to talk about. But right now, let me set up a screen. I just got to do one hoodie for my brother. That is his birthday. He owns a yacht. And I made a design with the yacht. I'm just going to do one little hoodie for him and give him as a birthday. So right now, let me just do that. And then we'll come back and talk about how you should raise your prices. So that job came out real nice. Now I'm going to gift wrap it and send it to my brother. Perfect, man. Um, when I started screen printing, I was in the game for about two, three years. And my lady, which she's my partner, she decided to raise the prices. She didn't raise the prices 50 cents or a dollar from our price chart. She raised that about $3. I was like, oh, my God, baby, why so much? You know, but she knew what she was doing. Me, all I felt guilty. I felt guilty that now these clients, I have to tell them that it's not the same price that you pay before price went up and feeling that maybe they'll leave, maybe, you know, but there's one thing she told me, she said, we already built a clientele. We already have a nice chunk of clients. So it's time to build the prices. And I didn't understood that because the way I understood was that screen printers raise their prices, um, depending on the supplies, you know, like the t-shirts, the ink, your overhead, inflation, cost of living, reason to raise your prices. And the other thing I, I mostly see is that your skill increases. So just when you raise your prices and none of that is true, that's not a reason for you to raise your prices. The reason to raise your prices is only one thing you should focus on is the amount your client is willing to pay. That's all you have to focus on, the amount your client is willing to pay. It's not about your, your skills, it's not about none of that because I have seen other screen printers work and I see that their print is not all that, but they charging a certain amount. I'd be like, wow, man, they, they be like three or four dollars more expensive than me. And they have clients, they working. So it got nothing to do with, because you know how to do CNYK, um, you know how to do all these multicolor designs and come out crisp, beautiful. It doesn't matter. What matters is what the amount your client is willing to pay. And that's what you got to focus on. So how you do that is first, when you're starting, yes, you have to start cheap. That means you're working on building a clientele. Once you start building your clientele, let's say you have already a hundred clients. That's, that's, that's a number that you go, I got a hundred clients. Now it's time to raise your prices because once you raise your prices, let's say two, $3, once you raise your prices out of those hundred, you might lose some, we don't know how much, but you might lose some, but at the end, those $3 increase is going to make up for that hundred. In other words, you're going to be working less and making that same amount of money. So yes, it's all about building your clientele, then raise your prices. So then once you do that again, you go back at it again. Now, all clients, let's say all clients, are you gonna pick up the, the prices? No. With the all clients, what you're looking for, once you already did your first raise, from there on, your all clients, you maybe raise 50 cents a dollar but the new ones are coming in that's what you keep with the three and that's the other chunk of clientele once 
you already built that one that already are paying that raise of three dollars or more that's when you come and do repeat the same process now you're going to take a little chunk you're going to raise it up a little and the new ones coming in you start raising your prices and that's how you start raising your prices and still be okay because there's a simple model to go by if you're too booked on that press then you're too cheap if you're not booked enough then you're too expensive that's what you have to see because you you want to make sure that if wow i'm too booked i can't even take i, I i'm not taking orders because i'm too booked i cannot get it done that means your prices are too cheap time to bring it up but if you're just sitting down and clients are not coming in bring down your prices no matter how skill how great is your skills you know it doesn't matter if a client is not willing to pay that amount don't pay there's some people that i hear that oh i got this guy for five dollars great He's, he's in another level. He's looking for building clients. But when you already build clients, you can't try to compete with that and bring down your price to compete with that one. And so is the other way too. If you're just starting and you are trying to build clientele and you are doing it very cheap and now you want to raise up the prices like this one's over here, what's going to happen is going to hurt you. People are not going to go to you. They're going to say you're too expensive. That means you're not going to build clients. So the b best way to do it is build clients slowly, raise up prices a little, build clients slowly, raise prices a little. It's a marathon. Take your time. It needs patience and take your time. But I guarantee that that works, man. Printing films for a client, but look at this image. Oh man, all those details. Yeah, so if you wanna print films for clients, just the films, I suggest you put that in your arsenal. Oh yeah, I'm gonna have to come out here and clean up my backyard soon, man. All right, heading to the supermarket, I gotta go get one thing so I could talk about the three things that you might want to use in your print shop. I'm using a different picture style on my Canon M50. I wanna see how the colors look, you know? And the other thing is that I've been using the wrong aspect ratio. I've been using a four by three, and I noticed that, and I have to switch it back to 16 by nine and see if I get a little more wider. And if you are looking for a camera to take pictures, to do videos or vlogs like this, a Canon M50, let me tell you, it's a great camera for beginners. It's so funny when you start getting older, you start noticing that you're making these grandpa noises. Like every time I'm gonna sit down, I go, oh, every time I'm gonna get up, oh, it's crazy, man. <laughs> and also when people make a joke or I'm gonna laugh, I don't laugh no more. Like when I was young, now I laugh like a grandpa. I go like, <laughs> Oh, 
You see, there goes the grandpa noise, man. Oh, oh, okay. Got some things from Amazon. Um, I painted a floor about a month ago and I moved it from the way it was before. So as it's not leveled. So I just thought of an idea of, let me get these little small levelers right here. So you can see them. And I'm gonna place them in the arm of my press and then level it up like that, which I will know that all of them are leveled. Why not? These little things here. The other one is for, I got some food coloring. I usually will get the big one, but I ran out of it. But here it is, this food coloring. I'll show you what we're gonna do with this later. And I was speaking to a viewer that called me and he watched my, one of my YouTube, so we'll talk about the off contact, he's been in the game for years. And then he was talking about little tips and tricks you could do in your shop and all that. It was a very good conversation. We were there for about an hour talking, screen printing. So he came, the good idea was that he said, instead of buying these little cards for to scoop out the ink, he said, go to Amazon and go buy the playing cards. They work just as well and they're cheaper. Only $10 for 12 pack of these. Each of them come with 52. Not bad, not bad. So that's what I like and I have because I'm constantly using my other ones and I have to clean them up. I don't have the cars. I have this little scoop thing or the spatula, clean it up, but this is pretty good, man. So you should try that. So right now I'm gonna take these little levelers and put it around the press and level up my press right now. All right, I placed all these little levelers on each arm of the press. And while I'm placing it, I'm noticing it's not level at all. Not level at all. So right now what I'm gonna do is start um, adjusting it from the bottom of the press so they could be all level. Everything is level. The press is level. Every arm is level with those little levels. And the way you will know is this. Once you put it there, that's it. It's not supposed to move. Before, you see? The move. Before, every time I stop here, it's slowly moving. But now, I can just come here, and there it is. It's not moving at all. Okay, tip number two. When you're using your water base adhesive, you spread it around, right? Once you have it, now you have to spread it. And the problem with this adhesive is that it's clear. So you rarely see it. So you don't know what you're missing. So using a little bit of food coloring, see? Now you're gonna see the whole surface that you need has the pallet adhesive. All right, just, and then you flash it and you will see, it's no blue. It's not gonna be like it's gonna stain this t-shirt, none. And the third one, cards. See how big they are? Good enough for you to just come and take this ink out. So those are the three accessories you might wanna have in your shop. The levelers were the best. I didn't know that my press was not level at all. Oh man, a big difference. I had to mostly, all four of them, I had to really adjust them to get them to that level because my floor is not level at all, it's not even. And the food coloring with this, this was awesome. This was pretty, pretty good. And like I said, the playing cards, Scoop up the ink, throw it out. Don't be wasting time with it. Save you some money. So if you like this video, press that like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Be thankful always, be grateful always, and just let God take you on the right. Peace out.